ladies. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sebastian Agre. I'm going to teach uh, this uh, one workout on the micro today with Heather and Lexi. Hi, and I love how color coordinated they are. See, that's if you're going to do a, a virtual class, that's what you want to look like. Okay. Uh, today we got a great workout. I, I just taught this class in West Hollywood. Uh, it was a 50-minute class, so it's going to be. 50 minutes, if you guys are okay with us, you know. Uh, always, I do always an uh, emphasis on, on the legs, uh, just because, you know, the legs are the best way to burn fat, you know, rev up your metabolism and your anabolic system. Uh, uh, we're having today to do the workout. We have a micro configuration number four. Uh, if you don't have the handles, that's okay. We're going to use the handles really for a catfish and a, and a few deep exercise, but if you don't have the handles, no problem. Uh, we're going to do a couple of exercises with the bungee. We don't have any bungees here. We'll do air bungees. But if you have the bungee at home, use it. And then we're not going to use the platform on the back. Uh, but if you have a platform on the back, even better. Okay? All right, guys. You guys are ready for this? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we're going to get started with the wheelbarrow. You know it. I'm, uh, I'm uh, always predictable. I love to start the wheelbarrow. We're going to start with a black spring. You're going to position your hands on the platform. So there's a ring of fire is going to be right on the side and the knees in the middle of the carriage and just like Heather and Lexi basically you're going to align your body shoulders hips knees all in a straight line always lower back is in a neutral position so the lower back is going to be slightly in but not caved in if that hurts your lower back you can always do it with your butt sticking out and that will ease the tension on the lower back uh, the shoulders remain in sockets as you move the carriage out and as you pull the carriage in so here what you're doing is you're going to be using the uh, uh, the shoulders and the triceps to press the carriage out and you're going to be using the triceps and the lats to bring the carriage back in but really the focus of the exercise here is to work your abs and the way the abs are working they are stabilizing the spine so in order for you to maintain a perfect alignment of your body you have to use those abs so you should be feeling those abs the entire time and a matter of fact the first few exercises that we're doing it's all related to the wheelbarrow, so I want you to always have that feeling in your abdomen, okay? Not in the lower back, in your abdomen. Good. In 10 seconds, we're going to go to the next one, which is basically a uh, plank. So we'll have uh, the hands on the platform and the feet on the carriage in 5, 4, 3, 2, and then I call this plank 1. So when you're working on the micro, you're going to see that we have m so many variations that I don't have enough uh, time and I don't have, I think, enough creativity to think of different names. So I put them plank one, plank two, plank three, wheelbarrow one, wheelbarrow two, lunge one, lunge two, and this is, you know, sorry, it's not very creative, but it works. All right, so you're gonna hold that position right over here, and in 10 seconds, so it's a 30 second plant, we're gonna go into the bear, bear one, and then you'll draw the knee to the chest in five, four, three, two, keep the shoulders right above the hands, and now slowly pull the knees underneath and then I love how Heather and Lexi, are how slow they're going because really what it's about here, it's not about the movement of the knees. The movement of the legs is gonna challenge the core stability uh, of your trunk. So really what it is, is the legs are basically trying to distract you from having a good form. So always make sure you feel this in the shoulders, triceps, lats and abs, same muscles as we use for the wheelbarrow. Beautiful, excellent, nice. So when you bring actually the carriage in, you're going to bring the knees right underneath the hips and then back out again. But always make sure that the hips are not dropping, okay? So you should feel this shoulder, triceps, lats, and abs. In 10 seconds, you're going to hold that plank position and then we're going to uh, walk down and we're going to go in what we call the escalator plank. So we're going to walk down on the floor and then walk back up and then we're going to repeat this. In five, four, three, two, stay in a plank position. And now go ahead and walk in front of the platform with both hands and then walk back up again. Good. Now this exercise is very easy to do on the, uh, at home, but it's very challenging because you need a lot of fast switch muscles in the shoulders, triceps to come back up. Good. And at the same time, you have to keep basically your core stable. Excellent. With that for 10 more seconds, and then we're going to go into a catfish. And after that, we'll go into the legs. So five, four, three, Two, put your hands back on the platform and then hands up on the bars. Beautiful. And from that position, draw the knee to the chest and then catfish. Beautiful. And for this exercise, we'll do like a 30 seconds on the catfish. Beautiful. Nice. 
pictures. Look at this girl. Okay, I'm ruining the picture if I'm with them. Look at that, it's fantastic. So again, shoulders are not gonna be directly above the hands, slightly back so that you engage your triceps. Shoulder triceps, lats engage, and of course the abs stabilizing the spine. Beautiful job, guys. 10 more seconds. And then actually drop your hips a little bit right, that's it, and bend the knees. There you go, move your knees to your chest. Excellent, good job, perfect. Five, four, three, two, the first lunge, elevator lunge, right leg. So we're gonna keep the left foot on the carriage, place the right foot on the platform, hands on the hips. So if you have a pole at home, this would be a good time to use it. If you don't have a pole, you can use a broomstick, you know, you can use a broomstick, you can use uh, anything that is long and thin. Maybe not a carrot, that might be too short. Good. But if you have a pole at home, you place it right over here, you can lean on that if you want to. Good. Now when you do the lunge, with all lunges, we want to bend that leg to a 90 degree angle, very important. I call this the golden angle, why? Because at that angle, this is when you integrate the glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, the inner thighs, the outer thighs, all the muscles of your legs are now integrated at that angle. So try to go this deep. If you can, that's okay. You know, you're gonna work on it, it's gonna be a, a work in progress. And in 10 seconds, we're going to go into a carriage kicks in five, four, three, two. So for this exercise, now we're going to maintain that perfect alignment. So the right knee is right above the ankle, 90 degree angle in the, uh, in the right knee. Hip joint is aligned the right knee. Your thigh is basically parallel to the ground and you slowly move the carriage back and forth. Now, these two have amazing core strength so they can put their hands on the hips. Some of you might not. You might need to hold on to the pole or you can grab onto these handles over here. Excellent, yes, beautiful. 30 more seconds and then we'll go into a pulse. How you guys doing, good? Good. Yeah, so these two are professionals, that's what they do for a living. If you need to take a break, take a break, okay? Do not bust your lower back or your knees or things. just trying to go above the limits, okay? Listen to your body. But at the same time, you want to challenge yourself. So it's, it's kind of a, a dance, you know, between how much is too much and how much is not enough. Excellent, 10 more seconds. And then we'll keep that left knee right underneath the left hip. We're gonna reach out for the handles and we'll do a quick set of pulse in five, four, three, two. So bring the knee underneath the, uh, uh, the left hip, grab the handles and then pulse up and down. Good, excellent. Go up, up, good, up. Up, 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 that's it. 10 more seconds, very nice. And then in five seconds, we're gonna put the right foot on the floor and we're gonna go into a front lunge in five, four, three, two, perfect. Look at how fast that transition is, perfect. Make sure that the right foot is not in contact with the platform, kind of look further out. And then again, you're gonna use the same form. You're gonna keep that right knee right above the ankle, hips and shoulders square, chin up. And then one thing that Heather and Lex are doing really well is they're looking straight up, straight ahead. Okay, most of us will look down, but the problem with looking down is your body then wants to go down and you're constantly challenging your balance. You will not be able to balance well if you keep looking down. So you have to look straight ahead, not down, and then let your body balance itself. And it will happen very quickly. Good. So same thing over here, so when we do that lunge, second lunge, we keep working the same muscles. The right foot now is down uh, on the floor, not on the platform. So there's a difference about five and a half inches, just enough uh, distance to really engage your glutes on this one. So I, I really like this version of the lunge with the foot down on the floor and then the other foot on the carriage. All right, 10 more seconds. And then again, same thing, you can stay in that position, the hands on the hips or you can reach out to the handles. We're gonna go to the carriage kicks in five, four, three, two, carriage kicks. Perfect. And then slowly draw that left knee. Beautiful, excellent. How are you guys doing, good? good. Yes? Got shake. Easy, feel the shake, good. Yeah, I had those ladies shaking today. Good. So whenever you do routines at home, guys, uh, and then you know we're gonna do more tutorials to show you how to use the micro all the endless benefit of the micro. Uh, I like to always pair exercise together where there's really no transition. So basically you can keep your heart rate up because remember that this is a muscular endurance workout. This is why you get toned very quickly. Uh, but you're looking for quick transition. 
Nice. 10 more seconds. And then you guys are so good, we're gonna give them a 30 second pulse bonus. Thanks. Five, yeah. you're welcome. Four, three, two. So again, now because your foot is lower, you can grab those handles easier. Bring the left knee uh, right underneath the left hip and then go to the little pulse. Beautiful, that's it. Good. And when you do your pulse, the same thing, you wanna make sure you put all the body weight on the right heel, okay? Nothing on the back leg, perfect. Keeping the hips and the shoulders square, chin up, excellent. Nice. Don't forget to breathe, keep your abs engaged. And in 10 seconds, we're gonna add the red spring and we're gonna go into a skating two with the right foot on the floor, left foot on carriage in five, four, three, two. Excellent, bring the carriage in, add the red spring on. And as soon as you're ready, there you go. Right foot on the floor, left foot on the carriage. So you have different feet options. I prefer when you have your left foot, just like Heather, just like that, right on the edge. And then you wanna make sure that you feel also the weight on the right side. So don't throw all your weight on the left leg. Your weight should be equally distributed between the right and the left side. Now, if you have excellent core strength, you can do what Heather is doing and Lexi. Or if your core strength is not so good, you can always reach out to the platform or the handles, okay? And you'll get additional support for your lower back. Good. Now remember the tempo. The tempo is a slow, controlled, continuous tempo. I do a tempo of four counts because we play about 127 beats per minute. So it goes out, one, out, two, out, three, out, four, and in, one, perfect. In, two, in, three, in, four, beautiful. You know what I'm thinking, Darwin, next time? If we maybe can suspend the camera. Yeah, top down, yeah because you can see right there, because they are actually not moving and it's fantastic. Just the left leg is moving, good. In 10 seconds, you're gonna hold it halfway and we'll do some pulse. In five, four, three, two. Keep your legs bent and pulse up and down. Good. I started to add the pulse when I was teaching on the Supra, the, the 25 minute class. And I don't know why I didn't do the pulse before that, but I just love, uh, you know, 30 seconds of pulse after any kind of set. Uh, it's good because it kind of burns out that fat switch muscle fiber in there as well. Good. But don't worry, it's not gonna get too big, okay? It takes you a lot more work to develop big muscle fibers, okay? Excellent. 10 more seconds. And then we're gonna go into the bungee. So if you have the bungee at home, this is what's coming next. If you don't have the bungee at home, shame on you. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna go into air bungee in five, four, three, two. Beautiful ladies. So no changing spray, just put your left knee on the carriage, hands on the ground, right leg is spent, and then go up and down, perfect. So if you do air bungee, then make sure you really press from the heel and then really target the upper glutes right over here, okay? This is not a, a donkey kick when you arch that lower back. The lower back, just like Heather, is absolutely not moving, okay? It's completely stabilized and then she's moving from the glutes. Beautiful, excellent, nice. And then really keeping the left foot flat, uh, uh, the, the left foot flexed, uh, flat, and then keeping the heel aligned with the knee. Excellent. And then go up, one and down, one. And if you had the bungee at home, you wanna make sure that the bungee is not uh, lag, okay? You wanna make sure that the bungee is always tight so that there's tension on it. Otherwise, you're just doing an air bungee. Good. 10 more seconds. And then we're gonna switch spring. We're gonna go back to the black spring. We're gonna go into escalator lunge two. In five, four, three, two. All right, go ahead and get rid of the red spring. And then place your left foot on the ground in front of the, fr uh, the front platform. Right foot on the carriage. And then as long as your foot is in the middle of the carriage, you're fine. There you go. And just like Heather and Lexi, you see how they're throwing all the weight on the right leg. There should be really no weight on the left leg. All the weight is gonna be on the right side. And more importantly, all the weight is gonna be on the right heel, okay? Because we wanna keep working the glutes and the hamstrings. Now with all the lunges, your goal is to go to a golden angle. Again, the golden angle is a 90 degree angle, a perpendicular angle, a right angle in the right knee. 
So we keep going down, deeper, 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 right there. So right over here, you have a straight line, parallel line, vertical line. That's the golden angle. Perfect, and slowly come back up. Excellent. When you stand up on the right leg, you do not want to lock your knee because then you turn off the muscles. So you want to keep those muscles active. 10 more seconds, and then we're going to go to the carriage kicks. Five, four, three, two. Hold it right there, and then kick that carriage back and forth. And not only they call it coordinated, but it's totally synchronized. Okay? I love it. So I hope you guys at home are doing it at the same time as them. Good. Yeah, shoulders back, abs engaged. Beautiful. Excellent. And then the movement of the carriage is very small, you know, so you might move it from one member to the next, but the carriage is not going to travel all the way out. Because what we want to do in this exercise, we still want to maintain a good alignment with the knee and the ankle. And it's almost like the carriage, you're kind of pushing on the heel. It's like you're kind of rolling the heel like that. That's kind of really what you're doing. They're not really pushing the carriage straight out. Imagine that the foot was inside of an eggshell and the foot's kind of going up and then down. That's, that's the kind of motion that we're really imagining. Good, excellent. 10 more seconds. And you want to do Moonwalker? No sure. Way. I didn't teach Moonwalker at uh, the West Hollywood class, but you know, they don't do Moonwalker. Do moonwalking in five, four, three, two. So for moonwalking now, we're going to lock the position of the right leg and we're only pulling and pushing with the left leg. And I'm only going to do this for 20 more seconds, okay? There you go, nice. Beautiful, ladies, love it. It's a very challenging exercise, and I'll tell you why I love this exercise. It's not because it's challenging, it's because you really have to think about this exercise. And when you have to think about an exercise, you are building the network, the neuromuscular network in your body. You build in more nerves, more body awareness. Really good for you. These are really good exercises. Five, four, three, two. All right, bring the carriage in. We're going to go back to skating number two, so we're going to add a red string back on. And we'll do facing the brick wall. Today, we're going to do two sets of skating, okay? So that's the second set. There'll be three more. Sorry, two more sets after that. So left foot on the platform, right foot on the carriage. Oh, sorry, uh, you're right. Left foot on the floor. Sorry, skating two. Left foot on the floor, right foot on the carriage. I get my pencil mixed. There you go, perfect. So same exercise, really bending those legs. And then again, the advantage of being solo to the ground here is you can grab that platform. You can also grab the handles and it's gonna force your body to go into a lower alignment, which I like better. And then we bring you down a bit more. Let's see, there you go. I know, and her, they're shaking, right? Yeah. And sometimes, you know, when, when you do an exercise, we want to stay within the effective range of motion, but sometimes you have room to drop, you know, maybe like an extra inch, and that makes a huge difference. Good. How are we doing here? Good? I yes. Shaky. shaky. I love it. Don't forget to breathe, okay? Very important. Uh, very important to remind yourself to breathe. Uh, many times we get stuck on an exercise because she's not breathing fast enough, right? So remember that as you you, uh, you exercise in your body, you have complex systems, you have breakdown, you have, you know, oxygen is being uh, uh, broken down, you know, to create energy. We build CO2 in our system. Very important to circulate all the air to really force yourself to breathe, okay? In five seconds, you're gonna hold it halfway, and we're gonna go into a pulse in five, four, three, two. Keep both legs bent and pulse up and down. Nice, excellent, good job. Again, when we do the pulse, we want to make sure that all the way is on the heels, abs are in, perfect, and working those legs, excellent, very nice. How are you guys doing at home? Good? You feel that? Yes? Are your legs shaking? Are you, did some of you stop working out and you're just basically just watching them working out? Okay. You can, that's the beauty, right? This class will be on demand uh, on many platforms, so you can always pause and, and then go back in it. There you go. All right, five more seconds. And then we're gonna go into runner's lunge two, right leg. So the right foot's gonna be on the floor, left foot's gonna be on the carriage. In five, four, three, two, beautiful job. Go ahead, right foot is on the floor, left foot is on the edge. So you have a couple different positions for the left foot here. You can do what Heather's doing and grab the carriage itself, uh, the pad on the inside. Or like Lexi, you can grab the front. And really either way is fine. The difference is you get a little bit more tension if you have your foot directly in front of the uh, ring of fire. 
So same thing over here, we want to bend that leg, bend, 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 that's it. Try to maintain a very low alignment with the right leg, so stay in that golden angle. Uh, you can grab the handles, or if you want to, I've seen some people do it, you can grab the platform, yeah, I've seen Heather do it, yes, you know, and that is good. And you can see the hamstrings also, which is popping out, you know, so even though she's not pulling directly from the hamstring, the hamstring is helping her to stabilize that leg, and it's active right there. Good. And by the way, uh, one of the function of the hamstrings is that you to slow the body down when you run. It's a slow down. Okay, so it's a, it's a breaker. So uh, hamstrings love this kind of movement over here, where you basically are forced to stabilize and control the body. So even though it's not a, a hamstring curl, just as benefit, just as effective. Uh, in five seconds, you're going to bring the left knee underneath the left hip. You're going to hold it, and then we're going to go into a pulse in five, four, three, two. Keep the left knee directly under the left hip and then go into a pulse, up and down. Beautiful. Nice. Excellent. Good. So we'll do that for about 30 seconds. We are right now, can you believe it? We're halfway to the workout already. Halfway. We're, like I said, we're going to be over 40 minutes. When I teach, you know, I me, mean, it's just like some more or less, right? And <laughs> they're like, less. <laughs> so, uh, in 20 seconds, in about 10, sorry, 15 seconds, we're gonna switch, we're gonna go back to the left leg, and we're gonna do the entire sequence, same sequence on the left leg. Okay, in five, four, three, two. All right, good job, everyone. We're gonna remove the right sprain, keep the black sprain, yes. Left foot on the platform, right foot on the carriage. That's it, and you're gonna slowly press the carriage out for four counts. So if you're not listening to music out there, uh, my, and if you're timing yourself, uh, my muscle contractions are about eight to 10 seconds on the positive, eight to 10 seconds on the negative. Uh, here there's not really a positive negative because it's positive and negative at the same time because muscles are either uh, stabilizing, pulling, or whatever. So four seconds, so four counts, is gonna sound something like this. We're down one, down two, down three, down, Four and up, one slow up, two slow up, two slow up. There you go. Nice. I said things to two twice, right? Okay, yeah. Okay, that's good. It's good you're paying attention. Good. Now my four counts is what it takes to get rid of the momentum in, in, a, in the exercise. If you want to go to a slower count, like a five count, a six count, you can. The slower you go, the more strengthening, tightening, and toning benefits. In 10 seconds, you're gonna hold it halfway down. We're gonna go back into the carriage kicks. Five, four, three, two. Perfect, keep the left knee right above the ankle. Again, you can keep your hands on your hips if you want to. You can use dumbbells for this exercise. Um, and then all we're doing is now we're challenging the left leg by moving the carriage back and forth. But uh, the exercise is not to push the carriage out. The exercise is to basically maintain its position this staircase position, the torso in an upright position, left leg is not moving, and now the action of the, reg le the, the right leg is challenging this position, and it's making your body really use those abs. That's a core exercise, okay? So lots of core. The micro could be called the core former, basically. <laughs> and I think uh, one of my copycats is actually using the core former. <laughs> but, so that would be actually the real core former. Because remember, everything I do is always real. Five, four, three, keep the right knee underneath the right hip, and now we're gonna go into a little pulse up and down. Good, excellent, perfect. So the pulse sort of micro burst, and the big difference is now you're uh, uh, switching to the fast switch. Fast switch don't last very long, eight seconds maybe. That's how much use you can use out of one. So a pulse for 20, 30 seconds is plenty. Uh, we'll do that for 10 more seconds, and then we're gonna put the left foot on the floor, and then go into the front lunge in five, four, three, two. Bring the carriage in, place your left foot on the ground, right foot on the carriage, and then slowly go into a lunge. Lunge for four counts on the way down, four counts on the way up. Holding the right leg straight, hips and shoulders square, shoulders away from the ears, chest out, abs engaged. Keep the left knee above the ankle, okay? And then again, something to do wonderful here, is as they stand up, they're not locking the front leg. A lot of people when they do the lunge, you come up, lock the leg, and then just go back in. And every single time you lock that leg, you lock the knee, 
you give your body a nanosecond break. So you're not constantly engaging the muscles. And that's why we don't want this. If you really want to work in muscular uh, endurance, try not to lock that knee. And if you do this and try to go to that lower angle, the golden angle, you're going to start to shake and sweat very quickly. It's not going to take 30 minutes. So 10 more seconds, and then we're going to go into the carriage kicks in five, four, three, two, hold it halfway. You can stay there and then bring the right knee back and forth. And that's ultimate core right there. Or you can cheat a little bit, grab the handles, or you can grab the platform. And that's actually even more of a challenge because then you are locking your body into a lower angle. Good. But again, when you do this, always be respectful of the lower back. If you have anything in the lower back that bothers you or the hips, you come up, you change your range of motion, it's totally fine. Okay, remember that um, strength, strengthening, tightening, toning is a process. It's not gonna happen today. It's gonna happen in between the workouts and you need to be patient. It takes a little while, but not that much. Right? You'll see, usually after two, three sessions, you have remarkable changes in your body already. Good. All right, 10 more seconds, and then we'll do a quick set of pulse. In five, four, three, two, keep the right knee right underneath the right hip, and pulse. Go up, down, up, down, up, up, that's it, up, up, good, up, 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 good, up, 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 perfect. 10 more seconds. How are we doing here, ladies? Good? Okay. Yes. It would be better to do it in the shade than uh, outside, huh? Yeah. Yes. All right, 10 more seconds. And then we're going to add the red screen back on. We're going to go back into the skating, facing the brick wall. So this will be the third set of skating, second set facing the same way. In five, four, three, two, perfect. Bring the carriage in, add the red screen back on. Left foot is on the floor, right foot is on the carriage. You bend the legs, stick your butt out and then slowly press that carriage out for four counts. Go out, one, out, two. I need to have that, uh, the name again. I'm gonna get the name again for the right. website. This yeah. is great, this is, this is pretty good. Yeah. And it's license free. Yeah. Love it. I was thinking that uh, as you talk to Jen and Adam to figure out a way to feed music directly into the, the line. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then once we know how to do this, I'll get a DJ to come here. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, don't know. I, you know, I like that. Yeah. Would you guys like to have a DJ at home? Yeah, next time? We're going to work on it. Good. All right. You know, the music, it's not about the music, but the music really helps to pull you through a workout. Good. Lexi, go down a bit more. Baby. There you go. Excellent. All right. In 10 seconds, we're going to go back to the pulse in five, four, three, two. Hold it halfway, so bring the carriage a little bit more, and then pulse up and down. And when you pulse, remember to shift all your body weight on the heels, nothing on the toes. Excellent. Really focusing on the glutes, hamstring area. Beautiful. That's it. Good. So we're going to pulse for an extra 40 seconds. Then we'll go back into the bungee, left leg. If you have the bungee at home, please use it. If you don't, we'll do air bungee. If you don't have the bungee too, you can, use, you can grab a dumbbell. Uh, I've seen some people b putting a dumbbell, nesting a dumbbell behind the knee, and you can totally do this. You know, you could do dumbbells. You could do a, a bag of rice if you want to. You know, I mean, literally, it just, you know, just think of things that are weight, and then you can put under your knee, and that's totally, that, that work. I like the bungee because I like the variable tension of a bungee. I think it's much, uh, much more therapeutic. All right, five, four, Three, two, all right, perfect. Let's go into a bungee now. So you're gonna put your right knee on the carriage, left leg is bent, flex the foot, and then always make sure that heel knee align and that is vertical, perpendicular to the ground. Good, excellent. Uh, kicking the foot all the way up to the ceiling wouldn't be a good idea because what's gonna happen, you'll always end up using that lower back and I don't want you. So you're gonna use the lower back here to stabilize the spine but the movement is just right there, that's it. It's just a low movement of the leg, that's it. If you try to, get, to extend that leg and kick that leg, you'll force that lower back and we don't need to do that. Good. So squeeze the glutes. Excellent. Perfect. 
Excellent. Two up, one and down, one. Perfect. Up, one and down, one. Beautiful, good. When you have your hands on the floor, just like Heather, nice separation between the ears and the shoulders. We have a tendency to bring the shoulders to the ears, but that's not good because what it does, it compresses the spine and the cervicals. So we just keep that space nice and open. And then spine is completely straight. If you take an aerial shot of this tube, drop the shoulders, there you go. You'll see that the spine is in perfect alignment with actually the rail. Good. All right, hold it up, hold it up, hold it up. For five, four, three, two. Back to the escalator lunge. We'll do one black spring, take off the red. So right foot on the floor, left foot on the carriage. If you have now some dumbbells, you can do that. If you have a pole right over here, you can use the pole for balance, but you can also do a biceps. You can do shoulders if you want to. You can just serve the platter like that. Beautiful. Nice. If you incorporate upper body movement with the lower body, make sure that it doesn't cost uh, the, the lower body form, form okay? okay? So if you integrate upper body exercise, make sure it doesn't come to the detriment of the lower body. Make sure you keep always the good form in the lower body because this is a lower body uh, exercise first and foremost. Good. And again here, I want you to pay your attention to uh, Heather's position. So as she moves the carriage back and forth, she's always keeping that knee above the ankle. So the knee never goes forward or behind the ankle. It just stays aligned with it. Nice, excellent, perfect. Now hold it right there and then go into the carriage kicks. Good, hands on the hips, perfect. And now kicking. And remember that when you kick that left leg, it's as if your left foot was inside of an eggshell and you're not really kicking, you're not really kicking your foot straight out, you're kicking your foot like this. It's like you just, right? Is it? A arch to it, there's a circle, a circular motion to it. Good, shoulders back, excellent, abs engage. Yes, nice, excellent, shoulders back a bit more, perfect, good job. All right, 20 more seconds. And then we're gonna do a moonwalker, just because we can. Good. Remember, the moonwalker is the intellectual one, you really have to think about that one. You know, kicking the left foot is very easy, but pulling with that right leg, that's uh, more challenging. Five, four, three, two. So now we're going to hold the left leg in the isometric hold so the left leg is no longer moving. And now we're pulling with the right leg. Beautiful. That's it. And as you move the carriage back and forth, left leg is not moving. That's the isometric hold. And I love the isometric hold. Probably the best way to strengthen, tighten, and tone. Just holding it that way. Good. But it's challenging mentally to hold that position, even 30 seconds. Good. Woo. Lexi is sweating. I don't know how there's not sweating at all. He Heather is like a machine. She is. She's a mini Terminator. Good. All right, in 10 seconds, we're going to go back to the last set of skating two. Five, four, three, two. All right, ladies, I'll do that for you. Okay, so skating number two, right foot on the floor, left foot on the carriage. Uh, if you're bored of doing that one, you can always do skating number one, the foot on the platform. Good. But again, I like to have the foot on the floor on this one because you can reach out that platform and it's forcing your body into a lower angle, which I cannot do. But Heather's doing fantastic right there. Look at that. And this is working the glutes and the skating is one of my favorite exercises. The glutes is like working all the facets of your butt and it gives you a perfectly round ass. It's a perfect exercise for the glutes. Now, of course, if you do skating with mega donkey kick, you know, with uh, uh, the bungee kick, then you get really a perfect uh, uh, ass workout, glute workout. Good. Beautiful. Don't forget to breathe. These two are doing awesome. We're 33 minutes into, minutes into the workout. workout. Well, well done, everyone. And now, you don't see them drinking water, but just make sure you drink water whenever you need to, okay? Especially if you do this outside, stay hydrated. In five seconds, hold it halfway. 
and then we're going to go into a pulse in five, four, three, hold it, and pulse up and down. Duh. Go up, down, up, down. Or you can go a little faster if you want to, that's fine. But when you do a pulse, you're not coming all the way up. Just in that mid-range right there. Hopefully you're pulsing within the golden angle. Nice. Good job, guys. Excellent. Slow and control. 20 more seconds. What's coming next? Runner's lunge. How do you like that version on the floor? You like it? It's good, right? Yeah. Yeah, runner's lunge. So you have two versions on the micro now. You have on the platform, on the floor. If you haven't tried the one on the floor, just try it. It's really nice. Five, four, three, two. Perfect. Bring the carriage in. Quick transition, left foot on the platform, the other left foot, left foot on the floor, there you go, right foot on the carriage, excellent, nice. You see how quick the transition are, the, the transition are on the micro, I love it, good. But guess what, next week I'm going to start working on Legree 3.0, that's with the remote control spring change, which one day will come to the micro, but not now, you know, I can't release all the good stuff all at once, guys, come on and I have nothing left to look forward to, okay? What's coming up for the micro, you guys are gonna love it. We have the ramp. Ramp is gonna allow you to raise the micro up, incline and decline on both hands. We're gonna have a wall mount for the micro. You're gonna be able to put the micro uh, against the wall and you use it like a tower. So you have new cable system for that. One of you gave us a great idea about adding a rowing to the back. So that's going to come to the back. There's a lot of really cool attachments to the micro. I think the micro is going to become the most versatile and most functional at home equipment. And of course, I'm working on the mini. A lot of people are, you worry, you know, worry about the mini. The mini is coming. We got delayed a little bit, okay? But the mini is coming. It's going to come third quarter next year. When are the cables coming out? Oh, cables are coming out October 19th. Cable. I talked to Michael. Yes, give me a date. So you'll be able to buy them at the end of not this week, this coming week, but the end of the following week. October 19th, that's when you buy the cable. Next time we do a workout, we'll have the cables attached here. All right, hold it right there. Keep the right knee right underneath the, the hip, and then pulse up and down. I know you guys want the cable. I'm thinking ramp and remote control thing. I'm, you know, you want the little things. I want the big things. Good. Up and down. Perfect. Good. Keep that left knee right above the ankle. Beautiful. Good. And essentially, when you do this, it's like you're not pushing yourself up, but it's like you're pushing the ground down. That's what you're really doing. If you really want to engage your glutes and hamstrings, remember that you're not pulsing yourself up. You're really pushing that floor down. That's what you're doing. Good. Excellent. Ten more seconds, and then we're going to go into a catfish, and then we'll turn around and do some more uh, core exercise on the back end in five, four, three, two, perfect. Bring the carriage in, go down to one black spring. I got you over here. We'll go into a quick set of catfish again. We'll do like, uh, and we'll do a minute set over here. That's good. So stay on your toes, so your hips are not moving, and then just slowly moving the carriage back and forth. That's it. And I'm also, we, we'll also, uh, in the next few months, we will have two more springs. We'll have a spring that is between the red and the black spring. We're going to have this called the white spring. And then we're going to have a spring lighter than the black. And then you guys can guess the color. But it's got to stay with... Huh? We'll do a voting contest. We'll do a voting contest. But it cannot be blue or yellow or purple. It's got to stay within the earth kind of colors that we have. So maybe gray, I don't know. But, you know. You know. Excellent. All right. 20 more seconds. Drop the hips down for me. Beautiful. Bring your shoulders forward a bit more. There you go. That's it. Five. That's it. Four. Good. Three. Two. All right. Beautiful. Bring the carriage in. Turn around. So now we're going to go into a reverse giant wheelbarrow. Uh, and then what we're going to do is you're going to put your knees on the, uh, sorry, you're going to put your knees on the carriage. And then you're going to put your hands on the floor over here. There you go. You're going to move the carriage back and forth. Excellent. Now, today I made a conscious decision not to attach the rear platform because I've been getting a lot of questions in the emails, you know, asking about the benefit of the rear platform. And you can do a lot of the exercise where the rear platform would be, 
The difference is the rear platform is just uh, so much more comfortable. But you can do this exercise without a, a, a rear platform. So here's one. So that's the uh, reverse giant wheelbarrow. And then after this one, we're going to go into the reverse kneeling crunch. In five, four, three, two. So now reverse kneeling crunch, you're going to keep your, you can keep your elbows on the ground or you can stay on your hands too. There you go. Two variations, elevated or on the elbows. And then you pull the knees. Now, what Heather's doing really well here and Lexi, they're rounding the back. So that's really the, the, the only difference between the wheelbarrow series exercise, plank exercise, so forth. And the crunch is that you're really arching the back over here. So like a cat, you round the back. And when you crunch, you really want to crunch your abdomen. So on this one, it's a forward flexion of the spine. And you really want to focus on, on, on really curling the tailbone and the cervicals, really rounding your back as much as possible. Good. Excellent. Beautiful. Ten more seconds. And then we're going to keep the hands on the floor. We're going to shift the position. Uh, we're going to move the feet up where the knees are. And we're going to go into a reverse giant bear. And I call this a reverse giant bear number two, because number one will be the hands on the platform. I've, I've created many animations where the hands are either on the rear platform or hands on the floor. It's the same exercise, OK, except for the position of the hands. So five, four, three, two, feet on the carriage. Excellent. You can move your hands forward a little bit more if you want to. There you go. And then move your knees to your chest. Perfect. Now, from that position, I love this because this is like a blank canvas, okay? You can do whatever you want. Look at how much space you have on the floor in front of you. And all kinds of really cool exercise. Uh, you can stay there for 10 minutes in the morning, do uh, many variations on the plank, and you're set for the day. It's really good. Matter of fact, you could do five, 10 minutes of plank exercise with all the variations in the morning. Same thing in the afternoon. It's amazing. You know, all this exercise right here like this, are really good for you, great for your spine. Your body loves this. Okay. Ten more seconds. And then we're going to stay in a plank position and we're going to do a reverse walking plank. You're going to walk forward and back. So that's one of my favorite new exercises to do. In five, four, three, two. Keep your legs straight and now just slowly walk up. There you go. And then walk back down. Beautiful. And I want you to walk the entire distance of the rail, right? So go all the way out, all the way up. There you go, just like that. That's it. Use that rail. Nice. Sometimes I wish that rail was 20 feet just to do this one exercise. Good. Excellent, ladies. Beautiful. Nice. In five seconds, you're going to go halfway out, and we're going to go to a pike in five, four, three, two. Hold it right there, and then slowly pike up and pike down. There you go. And if you feel like you have uh, too much tension, you can move your hands back down closer to the, the platform. Or put your elbows. That's it. Nice. Excellent. Good. Perfect. Ten, Ten more seconds. seconds. Good. 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 So in the class today in West Hollywood, we did the River Super Crunch, which we won't be doing today. But we're going to do a set of obliques twister in five, four, Three, two, all right, perfect. Come up, and then we're going to go back to the front for this one. Well done, guys, by the way. That is just like, yes. So for the twister, we'll do left side, yeah. That sounds perfect, yeah. Hands on the handles. Uh, so if you look at head over here, right foot is aligned with the left foot, right foot is in the back, left foot is in the front. And then just hiking up just a little bit. And when you do this exercise, it's not really, don't be hang up on lifting your hips really, really high because the exercise is not that. The exercise is about the initiation of the movement, just that pike. The, mo the minute, the moment you start piking up, that's all I want. That's that moment right there when you initiate the moment. That's all you need. That's it. The rest is gravy, okay? So if you want to go, if you're able to maintain a good form of your upper body, then you can pike a little higher. But it's not necessary. But you do want that initial initiation of movement. And that's what works your obliques. Good. Nice. Perfect. So same thing over here. We're always looking at opening an uh, op open space in the shoulders and the ears. That's it. Working on the left side. Very nice. 20 more seconds. Good. 
And then we're not going to go right away to the right side. We're going to do a side plank. Good. Or, 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 uh, why don't we do one of the new ones? Yes. The, uh, the micro twister. The Nighthawk. There you go. Nighthawk. That's it. I think I put the Nighthawk. I still need to go back today and add a few more exercises. But I think the Nighthawk is on the uh, Liguri home now. All right. Five, four, three, two. Nighthawk. So for the Nighthawk, you're going to put your elbow basically on the platform. There you go. And you're going to slowly move your knees to your chest and then back and away. There you go. And the Nighthawk is basically when you fold your right arm and the right arm comes underneath it. Now, if this is too challenging for you, you can always go back in the front and then do just a regular side plank. That's totally fine too. Good. Nice. So what we're doing here, we're going to do two sets for the obliques on the left side. So this is the second set. Then we're going to repeat this on the right side. And then we're going to do the side exercise like the sea serpent and the hammerhead because I really like those ones. And if you haven't tried those exercises, try them. It'll take two or three sessions to develop the body awareness and the mobility. But you start feeling the lats and the obliques working together really good. Five, four, three, two. Perfect. Come in and then switch side. Right side, so night hawk, right side. So you're going to lean on your right elbow. Keep the shoulder and the elbow perfectly aligned. Open space in the ears and the shoulder. Okay. And then slowly draw the knee to the chest. As you draw into your chest, you kind of curl your left arm under. It's almost if like you're trying to kind of reach out right here on the right side and then extend out, right? And your left hand, so much you try to touch your right shoulder blade. Good. Nice. Good. Perfect. Good. And then the obliques love this type of exercise because the main function of the obliques is what? Lateral or spine stabilization. So that means it's keeping your spine perfectly aligned, especially those angles right there. So obliques love that, and this is why you get the, the waist that these two have. It's just a lot of obliques work. All right, five more, and then we're going to go into the micro twister in five, four, three, two. Micro twister, hands on the handles. There you go. And on this one, you can pike up or you can also with the knee bent, right? You have the two variations. If this hurts your lower back, you can do what Heather's doing, knee bent. And you same thing. You're getting the same stimulation right there, that lateral stimulation, okay? That's one of the things that I think a lot of people don't do at home. They never work on the obliques. They'll do cardio. You know, they'll do legs, they work on the legs, you know, guys work on the chest, the biceps, stuff like that, but the obliques always get neglected, and it's a mistake because um, if you have nice obliques, it makes your waist very trim, it just enhances your body, but also it gives, you, it gives your spine so much more strength and, uh, and support. Good, right there, that's it. Good, always check your shoulders to make sure your shoulders are nice in the sockets. Good. All right, 10 more seconds, ladies. And then we may have to move the micros a little bit for the next one. Uh, we'll start with, uh, we'll do hammerhead first. In five, four, three, two. All right, so why don't we do this? We, for the hammerhead, we're gonna remove the springs. And if you want, Heather, you can be on this side. And Lexi will be on that side. Perfect. So for hammerhead, what you're going to do, you're going to move the carriage around two. You're going to place your elbows. You can also be on your hands if you want to. You can be on your elbows. Your feet are going to remain at the same spot. And then what you do is you're going to go from side to side. The goal of the exercise is to work the entire range of uh, the rail. So go all the way to the right, all the way to the left. Good. But make sure that you initiate the movements, not in the shoulders, but right over here, right? This is where you pull. You pull and you stabilize from your obliques. Good. Now, if you keep your feet together, you're going to get more oblique stimulation. If you put your feet apart, a little less. But you will still work your obliques regardless. Okay? And that has to do because when your feet are out, out, uh, outside, you get basically you're more stable. Nice. So if you want to do this one with a spring, remember you'll have to do two sets because you'll have to do one set facing one way and then the other side facing the other direction. Good. But you'll get great benefits 
without the strain, just doing this one. Good. Excellent. All right, in five seconds, we're going to turn around and we're going to go into the sea serpent. In five, four, three, two, perfect. Turn around, feet on the carriage, hands on the ground. Beautiful. We're going to have 48 minutes into it. And that will be the last exercise, 50 minutes. I can't believe it was 50 minutes. It actually went by very quickly, right? All right, so make sure you get the same, uh, the same angle on both sides, right? So if you go all the way out on one side, try to go all the way out on the other side. There you go. And again, just really put all the attention to your obliques. Obliques are pulling and stabilizing the center. Beautiful, Heather. There you go. Look, nice. Great exercise. Just strengthening your torso. And the hand says the shape, you know. And it's also great exercise for your spine. Your spine's going to love you. This is going to save you a lot of aches and pain in the lower back. You know, you're teaching your body to basically uh, support itself with the muscles instead of just dumping everything on the bones, on the skeleton itself. And the skeleton is, needs the support of the muscles. So that's what you get here. Excellent. Five more seconds. And then we'll finish with a psoas stretch. And you guys have done a wonderful job in five, four, Three, two, come up. So I stretch. We'll have right foot on the floor, left knee on the carriage. You can have a spring or zero spring, however you want. There you go. And there you have it, guys. 50 minute workout with me and the girls. A little round of applause for the to go. Excellent. Nice. So as always, if there's some uh, body parts you want us to focus more, uh, next workout that we'll do, we're going to integrate the cable. So we'll spend, we'll do a little less leg exercise, a little bit more upper body exercise, okay? But if you're more interested in more oblique series, glute series, whatever, please email us at info at legreefitness.com and we'll be more than happy to, to do the kind of workout you guys want.